Beth is the first person to tell me about period panties. I knew about period panties. The ones where we wear on our period that are already brown and disgusting. Right. Yeah, and right. we're talking about. I'm talking about that new invention. Time, this is a new invention. Oh, so like, I'm bleeding right into the underwear. Oh, you know, <laughs> yes, no pad. You know padding. We're yeah. here with Beth Stelling and she is ready. Beth, yeah. period, Stelling. She's on that cycle. Uh, you know what I knew about the before, before the. Um, the period panty because I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up around a lot of like Earth Gaia mamas, and they would do the um, the diva cup. Yes, you know about that diva cup. I you know tried it that? for the first time. Have you ever tried one? I would not do that. <laughs> Put a rubber cup up my oh. vagina. I'm not doing that. I got the tiniest one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the tight, tight, tight only. Yeah. Wait, doesn't it feel like you've got like you're walking with something in? Yeah, in I, your underwear. It's uncomfortable. So I just want to say, I the first time I tried it was in Amsterdam. Which you know, I think we can all agree is a mistake. Sure. What do you <laughs> mean? Which part? Just the whole thing. Time oh, just being somewhere, and I'm going to go ahead and try a diva cup while right. I'm walking around. So I was walking around Amsterdam with my favorite. Those are made team. of wood, though. They're clogs. <laughs> it comes from the clog factory. I was walking around Amsterdam with my team, my field hockey team, and I f- was feeling pretty good. No one thought you, you meant. I thought you your field meant your agents, and I was like, "Ew, Beth." Ew, t- no. And then, and then I was like, "Oh, Beth." Yeah, I was yeah. impressed. I loved it. Team. Yeah. Um, and we were exploring and stuff, and I said let's go for it because i was like felt like sure as we know a tampon they scare the crap out of you that you might get toxic shock syndrome right mm-hmm. if you keep it in over eight hours right, right. so there's that oh can i tell you one more thing Please. about tampons i just learned a year and a half ago that you don't flush your tampons Uh oh wait you never knew that no and, and it, you knew it you learned it by our neighbor's Place uh, overflowing? No, 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 no. I learned it because... Kayaking and seeing one floating next <laughs> no, to you. No, someone <laughs> said it to me, I think. And I was like, what? No, you flush the... I know I know you don't flush the applicator. Right. Yeah, but, but you thought you flushed the cotton. Yeah, and then you I... You were feeding the toilet what you thought it wanted. I called my it's mom. A hungry, it's like Feed Me Seymour. I called my <laughs> mom and blood. I asked her, I said, where do you where do you put your tampons? Wrap and she was like... Where do you think, Natasha? She wouldn't answer. No. Well, so... She needed the answer from you. (laughs) Like, almost like, I think I was raised that they were shameful, so just get rid of them as fast as you can. Like, you don't want to take them out. You don't want to fling it too fast, otherwise you're going to get some spritz. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You don't want to be in the splash zone, for sure. I'll go ahead and let you know that two drops landed on my sock, and I was shocked. Mm. I've never had that happen. When? Just recently? Just recently pulling out a tampon. And you got a drip drop drip? Yeah, one, two, drip three. Drip drop. That's just yeah. a straight drip drop. Okay, they're but pretty cute. you're saying tampons are just, they're bad for the earth. Well, no, I'm, I mean, well, definitely, I'm sure that. Here's another theory I have that is just in my head, which is I'm actually more of a pad person because I feel like it just comes all out. And when you put a tampon in physio- physiologically, I think there's some signal that's like, plug it up. Can I say, so it mm, as extends person, your period. As a person who's never mm. had a period, uh, but bleeds out of my ass like a lot. Um, <laughs> we got to get that checked. No, I think it's good. Okay. Um, I think strongly that I would be a tampon man. Tampon, a tamp man. I think Why? So too. I just feel it. Like the pad to me feels It's like a diaper. Cold People kind of say and, nobody wears pads like, unless you're like 12. Beth just said she wears pads. Yeah. You don't feel like you're wearing I'm a not diaper? Saying, I definitely do. Okay, but I'd say 95% of women probably in America wear tampons. Let's do a poll. Like, I'll do we it can later. do a poll. Yeah. yeah maybe let's... on yours. I think you have So, uh... All right. So, just we can we can definitely get off this topic, but I no, do. No, stay on it. I do. I dare us to talk for an hour about periods. This I'm, is I'm why not, I brought it up. I'm so progressive. Up. I would be into that. We didn't even finish the Diva the, Cup thing the, yet. <laughs> okay. So, tell me leave, the Diva Cup. Don't leave us yet. Yeah, okay. don't leave us in Amsterdam. But then I also want to know if those period panties work. Because I have never tried them. I guess we'll know at the end of the pod when I get up. <laughs> this is a white couch. <laughs> People complained about Eliza putting her feet on our couch. I mean, imagine you, um, a full butt print, just I mean, a bloody butt print. Uh, imagine if like a dog barfed poop behind <laughs> me. <laughs> it would be funny if there was a um, biohazard every time you did the podcast. <laughs> Beth, you're a friend of the show. We would welcome it. We would welcome it. So you're in Amsterdam. Yeah. You say, why not? When in dam, do as the dams do. Mm-hmm. Dam it up. Oh, yeah. Put in a dam. So... I, you know, I fold it. I got the, I really did get the small one, mm-hmm. but more, more out of like fear. Fear, sure. So I, you kind of fold it in half. It's like silicone. I put it up there. Mm-hmm. How deep you got to go? It's almost like, cause <laughs> I have a question. I mean, actually, I guess, so our cervix is like, have you, you can, 
know what I one hit is, a right? You felt I hit it. A, I hit a Not cervix with your penis, every but with single your time. Finger. Every single time I've ever had sex, I hit a cervix. Okay. It's incredibly long, but very thin. You have long fingers too, Beth. I feel like you could get a little further. I feel it mine all the time, especially when I had an IUD. I would always just check to make sure it was there. Oh, what's <laughs> but, up, IUD? But like, it's that sea anemone thing that you feel when you put your finger up. Sure, the valley of the okay. uh, the water chest. And it actually moves during your cycle, dependent. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, just marginally. Are we blowing past the fact that I just called it the valley of the water chestnut? <laughs> Nobody's even going to comment on that. I once read this Taoist like Kama Sutra vert thing, and they said like there were three parts of the vagina, and one was the valley of the uh, one was the valley of the deep chamber. I think that's like when it kind of opens up, mm-hmm. and then that the sea anemone is the valley of the water chestnut teeth. Wow, isn't that nice? And then Tom nice. Robbins called a whole vagina a peach fish, which I thought was nice too. That's disgusting. All right, keep mm. going. So there you are. You're folding it in. You're getting to the chestnut teeth. Folding it in. Um, yeah, and basically the goal, because that's where the blood comes out. So the goal is to put that little cup to catch it around the, the sea anemone. The blood comes out of the cervix? Yeah. Is that what is happening there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, you don't I know? I try not to think about it. I'm like my mom. Yes. <laughs> so you know where it comes from, I'm catching from, it. Moshe. And it's, yes, that. It's the womb. Womb. Yeah. Yeah, the sea anemone, the cervix is the link to, towards the... When it opens up. That's, yeah, the, that's the, where the valley of the deep chamber. Because the egg didn't get fertilized, so okay, it's bleeding. Okay, right. The ghost, the so ghost I, I put it up there. I'm thinking, this is great because we're going to be walking around all day and then I keep it in there for eight hours. Fill, fill, fill it up. Fill, fill it up, her up. Yeah. You say fill her up. Yeah. I gave it instructions. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> put it in. And then I'm walking around. I'm feeling really good. We went to the, I, I think you pronounce it Reich Museum. And... Then as we're leaving the Reich, it's almost like. (laughs) (laughs) It's like you got a full water balloon. You're amongst the German masters and you're like, you feel like. As we're leaving, I'm already out of the museum, so Mm. I'm not going to ruin any paintings. Okay. But it's like, uh, you know, like, I don't know if somebody has, some old person has diarrhea and every step to the bathroom is like. Sure. Uh huh. Oh, it's like that. You're but like, squirting. Gurgle, gurgle. I'm not squirting. It's just gurgle. Right. Oof. Because the Something's the, the cotton tampon oof, oof. absorbs it gradually. Mm-hmm. But the diva cup just saves it it's up just, like an outdoor, uh, outdoor, yeah. and then you above st- ground swimming pool. And then you stick your finger up there and just like deal with all the There's blood. There's a little I- uh, tail on it. There's a tail. So you go boop to pull it out. Yoink. You say yeah. yoink. Yoink. Yeah. Yoink. Yoink. And then what happens to all the gershing blood? Moshe, why are you acting like you're interested? Well, I mean, I think I, I, what I am is a progressive be. man, and I'm really comfortable with uh, Seems this to be interested. Topic. Wait, I have another issue. It's in the sink, so you're not over the toilet. You'd be over the toilet, right? Yeah, I was over the toilet, then I walked it to the sink. If you're oh really tall, God. you just you just uh, stand over the sink. Can you imagine <laughs> we have to deal with that every single day? Okay, month? so then I wash it, Yeah. and I go, okay, I guess I'm putting it back in. Yeah. Sploink. As we know, I've never... I mean, I was pregnant once, but I caught it early. Okay, congrats. <laughs> and I was actually, I actually had an abortion during the Buffalo Tens table read. I don't know if you ever knew During that. the table read? Yeah. Were you there? I was. Then, I'm, what? I'm sorry, Beth. I did not know that. No, it's totally fine. Oh, My friend Emily Plan came B in case I passed out. That's not an abortion. I took a mifepristone. Wait, oh, no, right. I'm sorry. That's what yeah. I meant. The abortion. You're saying... You were in a table read and you had popped a plan B before it. And then during the table read, it was like, mm, it's going on. Yeah. I mean, well, it was four <laughs> weeks, so there was no crying. <laughs> it was, it was a mere four millimeter, four millimeter yolk sack. It said, uh, Name Steven. instead, Oh, <laughs> so kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait for real. Yes. I mean, that was just, a, that's just something random that came to my head, but yeah. No, I mean, Hey, I mean, I, um, so yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> oh, I've never been pregnant, but that's why I thought of that. Because as I'm... What do you mean you've never been pregnant? You just said just you, you aborted during our table read once. at our house. <laughs> what if your children is like, in the sewer? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you've had any issues here, it's that. <laughs> I thought it was my tampons I was throwing yeah, in. Little Steven Stellings up there haunting the place. And that's why I had to kill it because I was like, we can't have the double S. Sure, totally. Yeah. Sure. You, right. you know where the double S feels, but right at home is at the Reich <laughs> Museum. <laughs> It's a Nazi joke. <laughs> okay. And you so, said you were off today. I know. I wasn't feeling it. And then Beth, you just, you bring something out of me. Yes. Like, like, <laughs> 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 okay. All I'm saying is I don't, I'm, what I, what I should phrase it as is I've never had a contraction, but I'm imagining this is the closest I came to it. Cause I've had period cramps. I have gas pains that have doubled me over. Like I'm getting stabbed with an ice pick and you like have to ride out a gas pain. Or even a period pain. You know, when you're like, have you ever had that doubled over? Like, ah. uh, No, I can't say that I have. No. I've had abdominal pain for okay. sure. But I'm talking like a. 
Mm. Okay. So anyway, but in my cervix area, it was like, ooh, like, you know, like a squeezing pain contraction type thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, is it going to go away? And it wasn't going away. I was like, get it out, get it out. And as I'm pulling it out, it doesn't stop. This is the diva cup? It doesn't stop until I pull it out. And I was like, well, I'm never using that again. Oh, Wait, it, why was it so traumatic to I've get it only, back in? No, I put it in and once it was in, I, I was in that pain. It was like this. Oh. I put it in. I, here we go. I've rinsed it out. Time number two. Yeah. Ow. 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 It's not stopping. Oh, my God. Now I'm going to rip it out. I get it exactly what happened. Yeah. Because I have often put in a contact and I'm thinking there's something up with this contact because my eye just will not stop blinking. It's got to be the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty damn close. It's got to be close, right? Yeah. Really so similar. I've only had worn a Debo, Debo, <laughs> Debo, Debo cup. That's my cup. That's what he says. I've only worn a Diva cup once. And by the way, it wasn't even Diva. That's a brand. That's like a sand Kleenex. Oh, I've only had a menstrual cup from the salt company, which is what these underwear are once. And it was in Amsterdam. And okay. now you're wearing period panties that double as pads. What's uh, what's your review? <laughs> or am I right? Yeah. And now I'm in these and I feel like they're great for lighter days. This I gotta is be, the end. I gotta be honest with you. I'm not loving the fact that you have that on, are wearing that dress and are on our uh, white cotton couch. Well, that's very is immature. Is it making you Marcia? nervous? It's just a little bit like uh, I'm a little bit, you know, this is a this is a, a, a heavy couch to have to have in your life. Yeah. No, you and know what? You can, you can bleach all of these. I'm not worried about it. Okay. All right. But I also, like if I were gushing, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> This is like day four. <laughs> this is like maybe, this is the end. This well, is like um, when you have to track it, it's like, is it spotting? Are they red or brown? Brown is the end. Now I'm getting, I'm actually starting to- Okay, well, I have an limit. amazing oh, transition, yeah. which is- Not like this brown, but like more like your coffee. This is black. <laughs> I made the, hu- oh, what's your transition? My transition is that Beth is one of the funniest people I know, and she has a Netflix <laughs> special right. coming out called If You Didn't Like Me Then. Is want. that right? If you You'll, didn't want oh, me wait, then. Wait, can if I you say didn't, it again? Because think about what's funnier. Like if you didn't want. want me now, if you didn't want me then, if you did, okay, hold every on. iteration. Ta- let's take that again. <laughs> okay. When you didn't, and we uh, won't be editing this. Okay. okay. Uh, so Beth, you got it, girl. Get Beth, it. I think we should keep all of it in. You are one of the funniest. Well, maybe it would be good to keep it in because that. Well, I'll do it again, but whichever one's better. I like Beth, now. People really are going to be thinking about the name, <laughs> Beth. If, Oh, if we keep it in. Okay, Beth, you are one of the- All f- of this goes in. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Beth, uh, start over, Natasha, but keep it no, in. No, you guys are going to be really for you. It is really good. Beth is one of you're, the funniest you're one, people. Uh, well, let me stop you there and say you're one of the best broadcasters I've ever worked with. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he went in business with you? <laughs> okay. no, for real, I actually like all of this. I Listen, I just remember the name was so funny when you told it to me. And also- Thank you. No one has a new Netflix special. You are so funny. You are the one person in- in Hollywood, who has a brand new Netflix special coming out. It's called If You Didn't Want Me Then. Nailed it. You'll Thank wa- you. You'll want me when I'm gushing. <laughs> That's the subtitle that didn't make the cut. If you so, didn't want me then, you're not going to want me on your couch. I feel like <laughs> I feel like these are like the last moments where you're going to just come over in the middle of the day and not be busy. Like you have a Netflix special out. You're Honey, so funny. You have a Netflix special. Yeah, you do too. I know, but hers is like, you know, coming out now. Oh, so <laughs> now it's really going to. Mine's with you. So people I'm get on confused. my way to catch up to Natasha. Yeah, we all are. But you got you got what you got, Natasha. Smooth, beautiful. You lips. lead the way. <laughs> Thank you're you. a leader. Thank you guys. Um, you're you so did it perfect and sweet and little and cute and funny. Where did you do it? You did Thanks, it in your Beth. hometown in Dayton, Ohio, at the Victoria Theater. And were you Survived nervous? Survived flood, fire, amazing. Going red in the last election. <laughs> <laughs> were you nervous or like I'm a hometown hero? I'm I was gonna, nervous. I'm gonna crunch this. I'm not that. No. And okay. When, I'm like uh, sadly. Do you get Not nervous confident. on stage when, like, in a regular set? Mm, depends. I, I, the answer is, the the yes. The answer yeah. is yes. I still get nervous, but. There are p- times and places where I'm not because I'm comfortable and safe right. in that place. And she did this in one take, right? Yes. So of course you're nervous. You didn't have a late show. It was an 1100 seat theater. Oh in my, hometown. my God, Mama Mia! So, so everything's riding factors. on that. Yeah, it was like it was like white knuckling through the whole thing. Oh to my be God! Honest. Did you flub anything? Yes, and, and it's did in. you forget to? It just is in. It's in. Uh huh. The little Easter egg for the fans, dude. I have an You're Easter egg. You're such a pro. My first special. I'm. I hate this so much. I was so nervous. I did a bit. You know the re, a read from your phone bit. Mm-hmm. And I put it in my front pocket. Oh no. And I I put it in because I 
and I knew it was there, and I knew I shouldn't have it there. But I, w- I had did I lacked the confidence or experience to yeah. say, oh, I'm just going to take this out. So I did the whole thing, and if you look at my first special, um, if you sift through the problematic jokes, you'll see just I have a <laughs> fat square in my pocket the entire time. It always drove me crazy. Yeah, and there's actually other theories out there that that is his penis. Yeah, square <laughs> penis. They call me square dick. Old square dick. Old square dick. Um, amazing. So, so what date does this drop? October 3rd. Here's a way for you to remember I brought you guys gifts. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, so we got swag? Yeah, you got swag. Oh, I don't swag. like this shirt I'm wearing, so maybe I'll... Oh, you might like okay, it. Okay, so here's this. This is up for your fridge, which I'm sure will live there forever. Wow, this is... If this you didn't want me then in the raccoon, this is actually giving very Midwest. The okay. graphic design on this. Yes. It's already out. It's you already can go watch out. it right oh, now. Is that, how does time work? I don't know. We just... Blah, 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 Unbelievable. This Look is, at this graphic you design. You can go watch this, this right now. This is for now. Moshe. It's right. a large. Moshe. Let's see here. That's from the taping. On the sleeve, it says Dayton, Ohio. Ooh, one I of your like favorite it. Places. It's good. It's really so nice. All of these cute. are the jokes in the special. Amazing. I love wow. it. I love it. You this really care great. about your career. Yeah. And a Dayton artist made this. This it's is really, really nice. Oh. I love oh. it. Oh. Los Angeles. You I'm should a... sell these on the road. Can I do you mind if I do your act for you real quick? Please. Okay. Los Angeles. What's up with this place? People are fake. They say, let's get lunch, but they don't mean it. Um, DLM. I love Doug Loves Movies. <laughs> I, there's nothing like like movie trivia. What's DLM? Dorothy Lane Market. D- Doug Loves Movies is you should have. <laughs> that would have been a better area for you to go. Whoa! Into. It's the birthplace of aviation. Yeah, that's where, that's where Amelia Earhart was. Is no, she, honey, the Wright honey, Brothers. honey. I'm gonna have to have you edit that out. <laughs> I can't have that going on the record. I mean, you thought Amelia Earhart invented the airplane? No, but I thought it was within the same like general <laughs> area. You know, Wright Brothers is like. <laughs> like uh, like our child probably knows about the right brother. And that's why maybe she doesn't remember. Listen, it. I'm from the Midwest. While. I went to public school. It's the Midwest. <laughs> it's know. in the Midwest. I know, but what I'm trying Wait, to I tell you. But I thought it was uh, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Well, let's just say you're going to love some of those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> A big reveal. It kind of was fun for me to write jokes about Dayton. Like, it's not something I would normally do. Like, so I'm, how much of it was about Dayton? Mm. 99% you're gonna love it yeah guys. it's tune all date in facts October tune 30. in is this for me because I love how small it looks it's a crop top with <gasps> oh the styling seal now that's cute can that's I put this really on cute. right now please do okay hold on I'll be right back oh, you're nobody close their shirt? eyes oh alright this is gonna be hot nobody close their eyes dude and Beth, I got you a small because you're so little Beth I wanna say thank yes. you for getting my wife a crop top I've been trying to get her to do crop tops for a while now are you serious no but I think oh, it'll okay. be cute on her because I was gonna say I love crop tops. I'm wearing one in the special. I can't wait to see the special. Thanks. I think you're a great comedian. Thank you. And this is nice. and I think that everyone's gonna be excited to see this bad boy. Are you so proud Thank of you. it? The truth is. Don't do the truth. Okay. Yeah, I'm really proud. <laughs> <laughs> How's it, look? Ooh, it looks cute. That's so cute. Oh, this is I'm good. honored. Oh, this is real good. And it's so soft, right? I love it. Should I go change into mine? No. <laughs> I would. I will. Your outfit's too cute. Um, thank you. I have two shows tonight. I'm trying to look good. Okay. So you look so cute. Eleven. Thank this you. is very nice. Oh, and honestly, you're not wearing your honey love bra because your nipples are blanging <laughs> right now. I am Ding loving dang life. Dong. Beth, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Beth. We're of so course. excited for your special. Yeah, John Allison Weiss uh, made that design. It's cool. cool. Uh, singer. Love him. What's he the singer of? Music. Okay, I love music. I'm a big music fan. Beth, you have such a fun life. You're always like, you go play with your field hockey team. You tra- you take the summer off to travel with your You girls. pinch your cervix with a diva cup. You love your family. You <laughs> hang out with them. You film your special in your hometown. Give back to the people. You just kind of have this real fun fun life. You do Thank have you. a bit of a joie, joie de vivre. Thank you. I, I've spent, well, I guess, whatever the... Thank you. And I've spent, I would say, what, my whole life building great friendships, and I have such good friends. And field hockey team, I've been on now for many, many years, probably like seven or something like that. Are there a lot of affairs in the field hockey team? <laughs> Why no. A lot of None. seduction? None. 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 Why None. You Although I did go fake skydiving with one of my teammates. It was his dream. Mm. And I went to City Walk and did that with him. Oh, I so it's fly. male oh, it and female. It shoots you in the air? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it male was. and female? Uh, depends. Like I have, I'm on a mixed. Yes. The answer is yes. It's, it depends. Is I'm it, on a women's team and I'm on a mixed team. And oh, mi- mixed, uh, gender, gender or race? Mixed gender. Okay. <laughs> and race. <laughs> yeah. They do race as well. Yeah. That's we're allowed. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's a big step forward for field it's hockey. It's pretty cool. Honestly. It didn't used to be like that in the, you know what the birthplace of field hockey is, by the way. What? It is Vider, Texas. That's not true. No, that's a, uh, a Nazi 
town in Texas. I don't know. It was All right. A, a riff for no well, one. Well, listen, obviously... <laughs> Beth has spent her life cultivating her friendships. And the last seven months, I would say, since I filmed this. Oh, yeah. really? I've been, yeah, I just wanted that, all those kind of fun things. I was doing stuff for myself and um, reconnecting with myself. Are um, you happy? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, not that Better I than probably the last time we were together. That was just after the one of the breakups. Mm. Well, maybe you can impart some of your wisdom on a caller today. Yeah, I would love that. Oh, uh, we got some callers. And uh, like Natasha said, Beth is the funniest. It's I, on Netflix not right now. I mean, you're literally, you're listening, you're driving to work right now, and you're thinking, what am I going to do tonight? We got your plans for you. You're going to be watching Beth's special. If you love me when I'm single, if you didn't you'll want hate me, me when I'm sober. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't want me then. If you didn't want me then. And I'm wearing a all black crop oh. top and jeans. Well, that's great. You should have worn the dress you're wearing right now. I should have worn a no, lot I, of different things. No, no, I'm not. I, <laughs> No, I mean, look, even my last special that the stylist was like, please don't wear these overalls. And I was like, can't help you there. Don't, don't be wearing, but then why'd you hire a stylist? They did. Uh-huh. Wait, Interesting. They saw, your, they saw your overalls coming up the street and they flew in a stylist. <laughs> Wait, it's so funny. People make fun of comics and stuff of what they wear, but like that is what I'm comfortable in. And I, I have no regrets about the overalls, I'll be honest. It looks uh, you know so what cute. I, think? I got a thought about- And they're like sexy overalls. I yeah, they're tight on my butt. I have a thought about stylists and specials. Sometimes I see these specials and people are, and I'm a bit of a fashion plate. I love clothes, but every special I've ever taped, I make a concerted effort not to do- um a wild fad sure, of the that moment makes sense. because I always think about these 80s specials where people, you know that they thought they looked awesome because at the time they were as cool as it used to be. And they came out very confident. Yeah. And I see these specials people wearing it and I go, you are going to fucking regret this. In 2030, when you're a 60 year old, uh, well, 2030 is a little soon, but in 2052, when you're like a 60 year old comedian looking back, you're going to be like, I can't show anyone this footage. How about just a suit? Some overalls, something that you yeah, know will not age poorly. Here, this isn't going to age bad. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, just it's black, perfect. black. I did good, black crop top. I will go say, plain. Um, lucky enough to know Tan France and be friends. Uh-huh. Love Tan France. Sure. Did consult. I asked and gave me and Tan gave me some really great options, but also with the caveat of like, take what you want. Obviously, no pressure. And he sent me or showed me really great things. I tried them on. They were lovely. I just kind of panicked last minute and took none of his suggestions. <laughs> mm, mm. I took none of the genius's suggestions. And he is, because I've since worn some of the stuff I he saw showed you me. the other night. You and- go, yes. You go, that dress is amazing on you. I was like, didn't wear it in this special. <laughs> let me say, Tan, if you're watching, we would love to have you on the podcast. We, yeah. we welcome you. But, okay. But also, let me just say, like. Let me you, just say. You're, you're, I did wear the boots he, he But suggested. your boobs were out. And like, you know, I get it. Like when you're doing jokes, like you have your own way of being. Yes. And it's like, you know, you don't want to be sex forward, right? Like, yes, very much for that's me. That's why, I, for me, my first special is like so embarrassing because my square dick was just <laughs> front and center the whole time. Whole outline. Oh, it was really embarrassing. Okay, so we are going to take a call. Beth, I are you ready Spanx. for this? Spanx. What I do they call your period um, These The brand is Salt. S-A-A-L-T. I should, wear salt. I should wear salt because it's got heft and it'll it'll keep my dong um, silhouette. And dry. I've never yeah. worn a shirt and like I this, leak. by the way. It looks so cute on oh, you. It's cute. Yeah, you look great. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. I fudged up my back recently, mm. and I was thinking to myself, I need to find me a back doctor. Okay. Do you have a suggestion on an app that makes it easy to find a doctor in my area that accepts my insurance? ZocDoc. Can see him the same day? ZocDoc. Accepts my insurance? ZocDoc. All different kinds of specialties? ZocDoc. Can I look up whether or not they are near me by putting in my... ZocDoc. Ar- Area code? Dude, ZocDoc is the best app ever. If you want an appointment and you don't want to call around to random doctor's offices hoping that somebody will be there for you, F with ZocDoc. ZocDoc is... The only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition you can think of. ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash honeymoon. ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon. Um, okay, so we're going to call Jamie in Michigan. <laughs> My knees are from field hockey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost made a bad joke and decided not to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. 
Actually, um, I did all of the math. I thought bad joke, and I thought I bet it's from field hockey, it and is. I was right. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna call Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Hello, everyone. How you doing, Jamie? You're on. You're on. You're Can you live. Hear me? You, yes. Yeah, you're live. And uh, have you ever excellent? Pl- have you ever played field hockey? Uh, not recently. No, but you oh. have. No, I've never played okay, field that's hockey right. day in my life. <laughs> I don't okay. even really know what it is. It's not even a prerequisite. I bet you do know what it is if you think about it. I don't it for know a what it is. Seconds. It's a sport. It's like, just hockey. Like they make fun of lesbians playing it. And that joke happened, girls unfortunately. That joke happened today. Don't I'm, worry. It's in my next special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, what, uh, you should definitely. Do you have a Netflix account? Yes. You're gonna, you should check out the special called If You Didn't Want Me Then. Yeah, I got it that time. If You Didn't Want Me Then. It's really good. We just we've been talking about it. It's really good. Starring our friend here, Beth Stelling. That's right. Big fan, Beth. Thank you, Jamie. Absolutely. Uh, Okay, so how can we help you? Yeah, what's up? What's going on? Okay, Uh, so I will try to be assisting with this very complicated situation. But get your bearings. Five years ago, (laughs) I took a DNA test and found out that you're one hundred (laughs) percent that bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing. It was a terrible it was joke. A Lizzo joke. She made a Lizzo out. joke. And to be honest, we are cutting it out because Lizzo's not an ally anymore. She's problematic. Okay, go ahead. Jamie, yeah. I'm not, not going to say anything until bitch. you're done. Okay, okay so go ahead. You, you took, took a DNA. A DNA. <laughs> this was five years ago. You took a DNA test. And I was 100% not of a Native American, which is what I was trying to prove my family wrong about. Like Wait, every you, it said you very were not. white person in America. Yes, I'm 100% no Native American. And I was very... I took that spit test with such enthusiasm and hubris, like every like Greek tragedy. I was so confident that I was going to come out victorious in my quest for knowledge. And I, I was momentarily. Uh, every Greek tragedy ends with the main character of discovering their Lakota. So I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, what is, well, I have a different father is what I found out. Whoa. <gasps> so when I took this test, I said to both my parents now, I'm not going to find out anything crazy, am I? And they went, no, Mm. of course not. That was their chance. Other than, you know, (laughs) the lies our families tell us about being Native American. So over the last five years, I've casually gotten like third cousin notifications or second cousins even. And it's like, we all have hundreds of second and third cousins. That's not that interesting until the end of August. When I got one that was a first cousin, and it was a person I had never heard of before. So that person and I start talking, um, and we're exchanging names, On and Tinder? we don't recognize anything. <laughs> okay. So then I call my dad, because he's my best friend. <laughs> we talk every single morning, and I he's go, only your best dad, friend, <laughs> <laughs> crazy story. Uh, and I'm like, do you think one of my grandfathers cheated on one of my grandmothers? Because how else could this make sense? And he's like, no way. That's not possible. Time number two, he could have told you. <laughs> well, so basically this blindsided everybody in my family. Except your mom. What ends- <laughs> nope. Even my mom. So this is where it gets weird. My dad calls his best friend. And they're talking about it. Like, have you heard this name before? And my dad's best friend goes, that's my cousin. We went snowmobiling back with her 40 years ago. (laughs) And it slowly starts becoming apparent to my dad. Oh, my God. My mother, before she met my father, dated dated my dad's best friend's uncle for many years. Uncle, okay. And then... She met my dad and they dated and then they broke up and she got back together with this uncle of my dad's best friend. And then she, she drove past a store one day and saw my dad outside slammed on the brakes and said, you know what? You're the one I want to be with left that guy. Good. He, she, he left. was probably the better dad. Yeah. Well, I like him. You yeah. Know, he's just your best friend over the last 35 years. I've gotten to know him. Um, and so my mom has had a medical issue. Like I, we both have endometriosis really bad. And so we've never had regular menstrual cycles. And so this is the episode when my mom, 
<laughs> when this comes out, just let me, I don't mean to interrupt this unbelievable story, but when this episode comes out, you're going to be shocked at how appropriate it is that you're here with us today. I, it feels kismet then. Yeah. Like yeah. this, is, Very much this so. is meant to be happening. Three divas. So they get together. My mom finds out she's pregnant. This was the 80s. They didn't even do like an ultrasound once during my mom's pregnancy. Whoa. So cool. they just guessed how far along my mom was. And then I was born early. <laughs> like uh-huh. three, months wow. early. three months early. No, three weeks early. Mm. Okay. okay. Um, Dang, so so this like all, my dad calls me one night and he goes, are you alone? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And he says, because I'm going to tell you something kind of heavy. And then he breaks all this down for me and he goes, I think that's really who your dad is. Ooh. So oh, since that happened my at the end of August, God, it's been wild. And my parents are both very, um, they don't talk about feelings. They would <gasps> literally in the sense of the, the word, the true sense of the word, rather throw themselves into oncoming traffic than talk about this ever again. Mm. And the hardest thing, and this is kind of leading to my question, is my dad said, what if the worst thing happens? And I said, dad, what's the worst thing that could happen? And he goes, that you want to meet him. Mm. And at the time, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I was like, no, why would I want to meet this person? (gasps) Who is this person to me? They're nobody. (laughs) Mm. But then as, as the days have gone on, it's like, how can I not meet this person? That's how I feel. How can I not? The curiosity would would kill me. It would. I would be on my deathbed being like, well, there's a thing I could have done and I never did it. And I mm. am feeling really weird about it now. So yeah. I guess my question for you all is I'm convinced that if I do meet this person, it will ruin my parents' lives. Like it will devastate them in a way they'll never be able to cope with due to their own willingness or lack of willingness. Um, Wow. And I also don't, all I know about this person is that um, he's apparently a a nice guy. Both my parents say he's a pretty upstanding citizen. That's all I know about. Do you look a lot like your dad or your mom? She definitely doesn't look a lot like her dad. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say. Um, which dad? No, I, so I've always thought I, I only look like my mother, but then I saw a picture of this person and now it's very clear, heartbreakingly clear. Mm. Wow. Dude, oh. I wouldn't want to see him. I'm I'm sorry. I wouldn't. You wouldn't? I would. And I actually, here's the thing. This is your life, Jamie. So it's tough 100%. because I'm sitting, sitting here going, what I want, what I'm about and want to say is very like me screaming at a Bravo television. Mm. So I almost am hesitant to say what I want to say. Say it girl. Because I don't want to hurt your feelings <laughs> because, because I care, I do care about you and this is your real life. She didn't call Esther yeah. Perel. She called the endless honeymoon. Podcast. Okay. She's all right. Get ma- made I fun of a little bit. Now, this yeah. is not about, it's not even like, okay, I'm just going to say it. You're telling me your parents avoid feelings and talking like the plague. Your mom knew and has known, in my opinion, because mm. she left that guy the minute she thought she was pregnant and said, "I need to be with the good guy." She or pulled the man over at I the like. hardware store. Was like, Rah! "Let's get back together!" Right? Yeah. From it's the like, hospital. who do I want to? Who do I want to raise That's this kid with me? Interesting. Yeah. And so, so, so again, I, I it's but, not but, fair of me to say this. I don't know your mother. No, you're right though, Beth. The idea that she was with a guy because you said you don't know anything about him other than he's a nice guy. You know, you know another thing. He he don't wear condoms. Now <laughs> she she knew she raw dogged him. She knew that her baby was three weeks early. There's no way she had no idea like no okay. idea. But, yeah. But can I just say something? You know, I do think that I can tell from talking to you that you have a very healthy, great relationship with your dad. Mm-hmm. And you know how many yeah. people I know who have that? Very few. Mm. I, I maybe because I know comedians, but like most people I talk to don't have relationships like this with their dad. So in a way, nothing's free. It's like your mom got you the better guy uh-huh. to raise you. Yeah. So it's like, and if yes. you think it's going to, I don't know. It's just like, it just feels like cloying to me. Like I would not want to like meet this guy. I don't know for, but it's hard for me because I'm not a sentimental person. If anything, it's going to be potentially awkward. But I will just say oh, another man. thought that might not be favorable. 
and that I was hesitant to say is that it was selfish of your dad to say that. Hundred percent. To say that it's the, the worst thing that might happen is you want to meet him. It's That's, very manipulative. Yeah. So as much as they do have a healthy relationship, I I can tell that that you love your parents. That he's your best friend. I think that's. That's beautiful. So it's so there's that, but it's the not talking about feelings thing, and then saying it would be my worst nightmare for it's, you to meet. That's him. whack. I that was the one place where your dad. You have uh, to love with the with bit. the open hand here. Yeah, it's like it's like you'll fly back to me because I'm your perch. And also, what is yeah. the uh, the fear is so unfounded. You have 35 years. You have an unbelievably close relationship with this man. He is your father. Mm-hmm. And, 100% and your he dad. thinks you're going to get coffee at like a, a like a Denny's and be like, oh, no, you're my dad now. I trade it up. It's yeah. it's not realistic. But I, it, I have. A, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. But I, I agree with Beth. It, well, that wasn't fair of him to do because he wasn't really saying that that's the worst thing that could happen. He was really saying, please don't meet him. He was making a plea yeah. of, for you not to yeah. do that. And that's not really fair. No, I have a question. How much like because mm-hmm. I have a friend who's going through something like this. Same thing. My parents it, like they avoid anything like that, like the plague, like they they've broken up relationships with their kids because how much they don't want to talk about stuff like generationally. That is a that is kind of like that the boomer and older generation. That's how they are. Is there hope for like a 70 year old parent to start like talking about their feelings? Or do you guys think we're just supposed to just deal with them how they are in their handicapped ways? Hmm. Like, are you saying should she go to him again? De- father, actual father, not bio father, but but how but important parent, it, how important and is say, that? I know that you said that would be the biggest heartbreak, but I really want to do it and I want to talk to you about it, no, even though I know you hate talking about feelings. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like, do, or, or do you push them, or do you just say, you know what, they're just like it's almost like a limited uh, IQ, <laughs> right? Right, but it's limited emotion. Well, I mean, I think Natasha, you're. Their their cognitive elasticity, you know, declines significantly mm-hmm. as you get older, and I think that that extends to emotional. I think flexibility as well for a lot of people. Sure. And I know that my dad has explicitly said, like, I'm in no way interested in therapy. Mm-hmm. And he right. got kind of offended when I, you know, I still sent my mom some. She was asking me for some some recommendations, and he's like. I never said I would do that. So you sent some recs for your mom to go talk to someone. My mom wants them both to go talk to someone. So now he's going to get outvoted. I'm sorry, but she's probably riddled with the secret. Mm. Mm -hmm. And she needs to get it out. What about the three of you going together to a therapist? You two. He won't do it. Dad won't do it. That's a, that's that's actually shocking to me because it seemed like he was the one who was talking about it more and the mom was staying mum. You know, I'm going to say, I got, okay, I'm going to go further than Beth. You ready for me to go? You Before ready? you do, can I just say one little concession? I just, I can't have you do that. Yeah, go <laughs> One <ahead>. little. <laughs> it's possible. Some women in the eighties or whatever didn't even like look down. So to give her the little benefit of the doubt, some people have sex and didn't even know what happened. Sure. So I'm just saying there could have, I don't want to just ma- villainize her and say she knew and she I, ran. Yeah. But I do. Even I, if she knew, I don't think she allowed herself Yes, I think a little bit more of that. And realm. there's no sense in pressing her. And maybe the two of you going together, since you're the willing party, yeah. could be good. Willing parties him. is good. I'm gonna, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna take gonna it say? a step further than Beth and say, I'm not sure. I believe that your dad had no idea. Right, especially with your face. Like no, no idea. No, I, I, I disagree. You, know. you, you do disagree with me, kind Jamie. Of. What about you? Well, no, no, my dad. He, he made a comment the first night that he kind of like said this to me, he goes, I wonder if I suspected it and then just never and allowed myself it to think there about we go. it. There we go. There we go. He said, so I think those detective those... motion on the case over here. Okay. So I think both of them had, had an inkling. So here we go. You got three options. This is my thought. Okay. And then if I have two oh, go things ahead, to go say. Ahead, go ahead. Well, the first thing is, um, don't feel bad that you didn't have any native American, <laughs> Because you're going to bring this up. It's, it's important. We this isn't verified information. Well, I was also told that I was Native American and my results came back with nothing. However, I was sitting next to someone at a party who worked for the New Yorker who had just did this huge expose on it, who told me that a lot of the Native American people aren't doing the surveys. So they don't have the information they need to be able to find it. Not surveys, but they're but they, they you know, like spitting in they're the not tube. They're spitting in the tube for the database. They're not falling for that again. Yeah, that. Exactly. Kinda. So this anyway, so you, you could is, so you could tell your parents that is good news. This is so funny. Two white women just being like, there is still a possibility. It's no, possible. I'm just it might saying, be. A touch. <laughs> well, my mom said that, you know, he was left in a 
papoose. My her her dad was left in a papoose on a door, and I'm like, oh, is she lying? Right. And then, what was your second point? Have you thought, Jamie, what you would like to achieve by this meeting with you guys at Good the question. Denny's? What is the thing uh, that you would like to happen, if anything? At least go to Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> at Marie Callender's. You guys are having like coffee with those creamers that never go get old. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting and they just there. Sit out all day. Yeah, like, are you looking for, for a friend? Are you like, do you want to like see if he's Native American? Do you want to, I mean, I'm just like, well, what, what yeah. do you, what's the best? What do you want out yeah. of this? That's a good question, Tosh. That's kind of. I, I, also a big part of this is since this happened, I've just had this like nebulous anxiety. I can't define anything that I want or anything that I'm really specifically worried about. It's all just kind of up in the air. And so when it comes to like what I, it like I, it's, I don't have the dad sized hole in my life. That that's very true. But I, I feel, I do feel I've been kind of a, a black sheep of my family my mm. whole life. Mm. I'm, I am radically different than literally everybody in my family, <laughs> not just physically, but I mean, personality wise, I, I wow. could not be more different. Mm. And I, I feel like there's an answer to a, a question in this person and maybe that's just me like romanticizing no, the idea it's of biological baby yeah i'm with you I, I i want you to meet him well okay. and i think it's perfectly fine and i don't think anything terrible can happen out of it because i know people who've done this unless you're alone in the place and he ends up being a criminal he, and, and also take advantage of the fact that your mom is willing for to, for yeah. therapy because then you can speak with your mom before you see him and the therapist and find the best language for your dad and the best boundaries and the best way to tell your dad. Maybe there's a way to be like, listen, dad, I'm not going to promise you, but just don't ask me and I won't tell you. I'm, French stuff. Throw it by the therapist, but maybe there's a version of that and your mom can be in on it because she's also a willing party and also forgive her. And it's Yeah, like, forgive her and, and she may really need this. Mm, the two of you together. How could she not? Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. This is probably... And then she's got this husband who's probably leading the charge of, we don't talk about our feelings. Well, let's think about That's that. The, I think, yeah. Spr- you know, like what? You're going to piss on a pole last. Sorry, that was terrible. I don't get it. I just mean like territorially. It's like um, potentially someone who's not willing to go to therapy is mm. perhaps patriarchal leaning. Interesting yeah. point. I, I'm trying to wrap my brain around that. Yeah, I guess so. Being going to therapy is like kind of soft. You know, that's like what soft men do. Yeah, have, maybe maybe if you won't go to therapy, you could find a middle ground and ask him to read the book The Will to Change by Bell Hooks. Yeah, okay. He's not going to go to therapy, but he's going to read a <laughs> Bell Hooks book. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, he might read a book and you could say, read this or I'm going to meet him. And yeah. also... <laughs> Another thing to, to, to an talk anti-racist. to the therapist about. <laughs> Another thing to talk to the therapist about. How to phrase this with my dad the, so that you and your mom are a united front. How, what, what's a book we can offer him instead? And who knows? Maybe, maybe after three sessions, he might come to one. Mm-hmm. And it's, you guys have like, it seems like you have a healthy relationship. That's really, that's actually very helpful because I didn't think about just my mom and I going because it's like, well, he's the one who's especially struggling. So I've been focusing on him needing the help, but us coming up with, you know, sort of a, a shared language around it might, might actually be really You should helpful. bring your mom. <laughs> you guys know what? each other. You don't want to bring your mom because you know, what your, you know, your mom will make an emotional decision at the drop of a hat and she'll leave, you'll leave your dad for him. Um, now that would be a cool so- end of this saga. If she's just like, actually, you're the one for me. No, Here's what I was thinking, and I think Beth and Natasha have summed it up really well. Is like you basically uh, this whole time I've been thinking you you basically have three choices, right? You can meet him and tell your dad. You can meet him and keep a secret and not tell your dad, or you can not meet him. Now, just to simplify your choices, you've decided it's obvious that you've decided to meet him. That you're going to meet him. I can tell. The curiosity is too big. You're going to meet him. I can just tell. You you want to meet him. You're going to meet him. Okay. And there's, by the way, nothing wrong with that. Totally. Uh, Completely agree. In fact, uh, you're the victim. Right. You're a 100% victim. I mean, you you just were born, you know, like... (laughs) I'm just saying it's not it's you should not feel guilty. They're the ones who did this, you know, so it's like you now have to pick up the pieces in the way that you want. So now you have two choices. So things have become simple, so simpler. Now, now it's a binary choice. Meet him and don't tell him or meet him and tell him. 
and you no keep it cryptic that's what that was my thing well I, that's what i was going to say now we've now they've opened up beth and natasha have opened up this kind of sort of third lane which is meet him but find a strategy in which you can tell your father in the terms that he will be able to accept it and it will not cause an atomic reaction in your relationship and maybe that means like like natasha was saying like the french monogamy way which is like i'm not going to lie to you but I'm not going to volunteer this information either. I'm not going to give you a promise I won't meet him. But who who knows? Maybe it's you and your mom becoming on a, a united front in therapy and figuring out a strategy on how she can tell your dad or whatever it is. But now, but now the you, your choices I feel like are a little bit simpler. And I also love that you you talk to your dad every morning on the phone. He calls me every morning on my way to work. Aww. And, and what does he? He just asks you how you're doing and stuff. Oh, he mostly like, sorry, he mostly yells at traffic and I am like (laughs) an observer to the experience, but um, he'll ask about like what's on, you know, what's on my agenda for the day. And he's like, you're not meeting anybody later, are you? (laughs) (laughs) He's like, he hasn't started. He actually just started calling me every day. (laughs) I mean, he does seem like a really nice, sweet dad. And so it's like also the fact that you guys have such constant communication, even though you're in your thirties, like, you know, I think that making sure just letting him know how much you love him and just say, you know, I just want you to know, Dad, how much these calls, you know, I just love. Oh, lo- oh, 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 well, oh, well, oh, 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 Jamie, saying, Jamie, I, no, I just, uh, no, I don't know, no, just Jamie, Jamie. This is a manipulation tactic, though, for when you eventually tell, you know, so just tell him soon, like, how important it is, or I don't know, just like establishing and the obvious thing is that you won the dad lottery like god how lucky you are yeah. like you know i mean you could have been raised with this other person and that wouldn't have been the life that you wanted i mean your mom's a hero as yeah. of now <laughs> you mean I, next week she the might competition be like damn has i just fucked begun. up <laughs> no but i do think that women like have like a sixth sense too about like their children like i remember my mom like she never liked any of my boyfriends but like she did like moshe and like mm. i i could just kind of like you know and instinct. like I feel like there is an instinct. So maybe your mom was like, you know, she, she knew just, the right way to go. Yeah. Like, you know, she was like pr- making yeah. it so that you had a, a dad who calls you while you're in traffic so every the, morning. So this I, is awesome. Yeah. I ahead, think it's ben. great that you will have this opportunity. I think you should definitely do the therapy alone with your mom, because what if she's holding on to things that she really needs to let out? How cool is that, though? You called this podcast thinking you had two choices and actually Beth and Natasha's wisdom just opened up this new avenue. It's like now you've got a strategy. You don't know exactly what you're going to do, but you know where you're going to start. You're going to go to therapy with your mom, talk with her about this in there and get both her take and a professional's take on what the best practices are. I mean, this podcast fucking rules. (laughs) A million percent. Thank you all so much. I, I really didn't. I thought that I was just going to be getting, you know, confirmation of, of what I kind of was already, but I, I really didn't think of this third option. I, I couldn't imagine it in my, in the place that I've been. So I, I, I really, really appreciate you all very much. So thank you. Good luck. To I'm Amy. excited for your mom. Yeah. Let us know what happens. Yeah. Keep yeah, in touch. Too. We would love to know what happens. Yeah. Let us know. All please. Right, I will. All right. Good luck. Bye. All Jamie. Right, thank you. You guys just nailed that one. We're so lucky to be able to have therapy. I agree. Therapy is like so yeah. important. Well, just I'm glad imagine- I shared what I really felt because I didn't want to hurt her feelings or anything like that. But what was your, because you think that her think mom just little- knew. Well, I think On some it, level, honestly, just what I said, I think I'm not really blaming her. I just think basically what I said, I'm in, I'm in the middle. I'm sort of like, she had to have known maybe it's, something, but also not a lot of people even look down. Some people don't know what makes a baby. No, people had babies in toilets for like 13 seasons yeah. of a TV but show. But I just mean to like <laughs> being so close with your dad. It's sometimes it's a microscopic relationship and you need to zoom out and go, is that actually healthy? I, yeah, it's fair. filled with love, but is it healthy? Yeah. But being a good parent... And you won't go to therapy, so... Being a good parent, I think, is, like, it's so special to have, like... Well, there's a lot of bad ones out there. I know. That's why I'm, like... I remember uh, a f- my friend used to say, like, that's the best karma you could have is, like, being born into a good family. Mm. You know? Because it's, like, how often does that happen? Well, I tell our child how much I love her a hundred times a day, maybe too many times a day, and... I, I it's always, not really sinking in. <laughs> <laughs> I always hear these like comedians on stage and like certain people that I know whose parents literally never said I love you. Right. I can't I can't wrap my brain around what that kind of family dynamic is like. I true I literally can't. I don't know. I I don't either. But that's why I it's I'm not doubting that they have a good relationship. But someone who doesn't go to therapy and calls every day, it's like 
it's sort of like, well, I made the joke that was like, you're not meeting anybody later, right? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I, I think you're right. You know, there's there's some aspects of control there too. For sure. Oh, you're right. That's true. All right. But again, I'm not shitting on him. I'm just, no, we I have, shared with her how I felt. Not only, listen, at the end of that <laughs> call, care. that woman is going to seek therapy with yeah. her mom. And I think now it, I'm excited gonna, for her mom genuinely. I wish same. my mom would go to therapy with me. But oh, same. Same. I wish your mom would my too. My mom goes. I mean, would your mom go to therapy with you? Oh my God. My, my mom, mom has only gone to therapy with me my entire life. Do you know how many hours of therapy I've sit, sat in with my mother? Really? Uh, 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 countless. Countless. Because of your early troubles? Well, because of my early troubles, but also because of hers. In my rela- in my family, I describe like uh, therapy was re- was uh, took the place of religion. So Pretty cool, though. Yeah, well, it's it, very in, like, intellectual. Well, it was cool, but it also had negative things. Like, you know, growing up, I would there would be an intractable position that my mother would take that what didn't make any sense like didn't make any sense you know i mean in the in my first book i described it as me saying it's it wasn't quite this extreme but it was close to me saying the sky's blue mom and my mom would be like are you crazy the sky's green i go no the sky is blue and then we go to therapy and i go my mom keeps saying the sky's green and the therapist would go it's blue and my mom goes oh okay it's blue and that that's was frustrating very frustrating it's like i'm over here telling you what's obvious but and you guys true. have a great relationship now that's true that's true that's you true love your mom every time i go out of town Moshe's like my mom's here i think you guys even like slept in the bed once and watched a movie or something I I like my mom. That's very sweet. Yeah, I like my mom. She's got she 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 spoons in just just the Do you right guys way. Spoon. I spoon my mom when you're on, only when you're on the road. How? <laughs> All right, fine. Don't All right, spoon listen. Spoon my mom. <laughs> All right, we got another call. Hey Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. What am I gonna throw you down on right after we're done recording this ad? I think our mattress. Who makes it? Uh, Helix. If you're looking for more cushion for the pushing, we recommend Helix. But if you've already pushed the cush yourself and you have a little bit of a rug rat running around the house (laughs) because of that pushing, well, then we recommend Helix Kids. Helix mattresses are the most comfortable mattress we've ever slept on. And our kids sleeps on a different one every night. And we all love our mattresses. Helix Kids has a two-sided mattress. The firm side for kids three to seven that gives them the spinal support they need for to aid their growing bodies. And the softer for kids eight to 12. Oh, we're going to have to flip her mattress. Oh, it's going to be sad when to, we have to do that. <laughs> to offer a more comforting feel kids prefer as they grow up. Helix Kids has kid-focused features like an antimicrobial shield. Why do they need that? Because children piss in the bed. They're disgusting. Yeah, we don't recommend having a kid, but if you do, we recommend having a Helix for kids. It also comes with a hypoallergenic cover. A water and stain resistance. Uh, how many times have we forgot that when we had our old mattress to put the little pee pad on? But it didn't matter. And then matter. they would like pee in the bed, and then we'd be baking soda you know, it didn't uh, matter because piss out of the mattress. It didn't matter because Helix hooked it up. They did. They're a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences, as well as a dynamic mattress that fits your child's needs over the years. Once you're matched with your perfect mattress using the Helix Sleep Quiz, your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Are we making it clear you can get a mattress that's perfect for you? Or the Helix Kids mattress, which is perfect for your kid no matter what age they are. And they know there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty for you and your child to try out the new Helix mattresses. All right, well, right now Helix is offering 20% off of all mattress orders, including that Helix Kids mattress and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash honeymoon. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. What were we just talking about at dinner tonight? Cutting down on frivolous what? Spending. And did you take that as a personal attack on you? I did. But it wasn't because you do it, because I do it, because we do it, because we all do it. Because everybody listening right now probably has a subscription that they've been paying for for months, and they forgot all about it. That's why you need to try Rocket Rocket Money. Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. The world's getting more expensive and cutting back on spending is a good idea and not a personal attack on an anniversary dinner at Dan Tana's in Los Angeles, California. You should use Rocket Money because we use Rocket Money. It saves the average person up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way, like we do 
by going to rocket rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. We really do love rocket money. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Okay, so we're about, uh, we got someone on the line waiting. So let's, oh wait, Beth, are you cool to stay for one more? Of course she is. Okay, let's That's give sweet Beth right there. Rachel in a city I love, Austin, a call. Or let's pick up her call. Let's enjoy her. I love Austin. I really do. I think... That's where we got COVID in that my favorite is. hotel. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Love it. Oh. Have you ever gotten COVID in Austin, Rachel? <laughs> well, no, but I did get COVID in Western Massachusetts three days before my scheduled C-section. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. That's the worst. No. What happened? Did they not do it? Well, first, can you guys hear me okay? I have my AirPods in. Yeah, you're yeah. Good. I just want to make sure it's But there. I did hear okay, that cool. those cause brain cancer. Oh, she did. She came home. She goes, did you hear Stop. we're not supposed to use AirPods anymore? I go, who fucking cares? Okay, look. I, it's fine. Cancer, is, I've been playing with carcinogenics my whole life. Uh, sure. so. Well, what happened with the COVID? Did they take the baby out or did they say it's got to wait? Okay, so my husband got it first. We went to this big Ghanaian barbecue. It was all outdoors and we hadn't had it in two years. We thought we were kind of, you know, cooler than everybody. You hadn't had Ghanaian barbecue in two years? Dude, that was how rough the pandemic was. Nobody had Ghanaian yeah. barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, it was what this Ghanaian guy high school son's graduation and they'd always do these big feasts so there was like a goat roast and the stews and the you know all this That's stuff so sad that your neighborhood couldn't have a goat roast during <laughs> the pandemic. i know it's like <laughs> what is life um so then he got it and he tested positive and so we we're trying to quarantine from each other because we knew we had this uh operation coming on tuesday and it's even more significant because in ghana every child that's born has a day name and so his name was going to be franklin Kwabana as a middle name. Kwabana means Tuesday born and Kobe is the nickname for that. So I, we could call him Kobe or Frankie. Anyway, uh, so he got COVID, then I got it and they had to postpone it until, sat uh, until Saturday, um, which would have been Franklin Kwame, uh, which is Saturday born. And you're like, can we not just keep him in for one week? <laughs> and then he, I went into labor Friday morning. So he ended up being... Um, Franklin Kofi. So we call him Frankie or Kofi. All right. Well, look, you got this. This is perfect. Everything worked out. Can you imagine him <laughs> as a Kwame or a, a Kobe? Kobe? Come on. That is, he's obviously no, a Kofi. He's Kofi all the day. All, yeah. all the way. Yeah, sure. absolutely. All okay, right. It's okay. funny because my, my ex's da uh, dad was Kofi and he always said, no, you can't trust Kofis. They're womanizers. <laughs> well, <laughs> How old oh, is so the kid? It's, it's almost like you're an astrological sign, kind of. Literally. And they have so many names that denote, like, your birth order, like, if you're a bastard, like, if you were, if your mom was fat. Ooh, like, what's, the bastard, what's the name? bastard? Yeah, I need to know that. Oh, know? oh, I don't know them all. It's in Chi, which is uh, this uh, uh, Ghanaian language. Someone told me that Sagittarius's are the sluts of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I'm a Scorpio. I've always been really self-conscious about that. Not self-conscious, but sort of proud Scorpios of Scorpios like, maybe are even bigger sluts. Maybe they're the ones. I don't what know. about Aries? Everybody I'm an Aries. Me too. All right, before we get off, I, we started as, a, um, as an advice podcast, but we've moved into Ghanaian uh, cultural <laughs> trivia podcast. <laughs> well, are look, they, I've got a lot of it. Are they all Ks? Every single day name? No. So do you know the day of the week you were born? No, I do not. I'm Let's Sunday. Find out. Let's What's find your Ask Chat GPT okay. July 6, 1979. Oh, I'm about to get a day name right now. I'm excited. <laughs> I want a day name. Do you women can have get one. Them? They have different ones for girls. Oh, yes. This is going to be great. Day of huh? What? I was born okay. on a Friday. Moshe, you're also Kofi. Kofi. Hell yeah. Kofi. And I'm a huge womanizer. <laughs> no. I'm a crazy womanizer. That's no, so crazy. That track. Oh. Wait, can, can we find Kofis out? These are notorious fuckboys. Oh, amazing. March 26, 1974. And then also Beth's was a Sunday. Yeah. 26. And we will be censoring out the date. Did I say Sunday? I'm Tuesday. Okay. I'm going up on a Tuesday. You said Sunday. Beth's you're Kobe. Tuesday. So you're both Tuesday? I'm a Tuesday. You're two Tuesdays. Abana. 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 That's nice. Yeah. Abana. Natasha yeah. Abana. Okay, anyway, why'd you call? Well, I was thinking cuz it's uh, because it's a little bit complicated. I thought I would just read the email and I know you'll roast me for that, but Let's it makes it. it just helps me kind of. We can't roast you. You're, you're doing the roaster great so here. Far, you, you're you're the goat all. roaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? I don't even eat the goat actually. I just prefer the chicken. Why would but you? Too visceral for you? 
I did, I did try a goat kebab once, and I, and I think maybe I got the ear or the hoof or something. So I was just like, no, you I gotta avoid it. the ear. I don't That's like classic. goat. I don't think. Can't All right, do okay. I don't, Read the email. I don't think we do that. Let's hear it. Okay. Hey, Natasha and Moshe. My name is Rachel, and I have a couple things I want to share. First, I was catching up on old episodes today, and just listened to the egg on ice episode. I had my 16 month old son via IVF, and we have two more embryos on ice, but I can't have any more pregnancies. My son is half Ghanaian. Shocker half white and is brilliant and beautiful photos attached. I'm faced with the decision of what to do with these little M babies and thought I'd check if your friend is still looking. Oh, oh, Um, that's so sweet. Also, (laughs) I need some advice. My husband and I are separated. I am doing 99% of momming and household tasks while trying to begin dating again. My marriage was largely sexless for six years, and now I've entered into a bit of a sexual revolution. Sounded Everything a little Kofi to me, miss. <laughs> a little Kofi over there. I got that Kofi and energy. And got her groove back. <laughs> <laughs> Abana. Yeah, Is that Abana. Me? Yeah. Abana. Um, We're chill. So I've recently, got, I, oh, I've recently gotten into Tantra, BDSM, kink, dating women, ENM, et cetera. Whoa, 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 um, whoa, 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 whoa. What's ENM? You, you lo- ethical non-monogamy. Okay. Oh. E-N-M. E-N-M. I didn't. Ethical oh. non-monogamy. Ethical non-monogamy. Okay. And I got call it. it yeah. We got um unethical the- <laughs> monogamy. There's all these um, acronyms that I've been learning too. Which is part okay. of it. Wait, so ethical um, non-monogamy would be, be like marriage people who are like cheating. No, it's no. ethical. It's ethical. How's it ethical? I'm saying I only believe in unethical non-monogamy. Wait, uh, What's at, wait, but can you tell me a scenario? Open relationship is what relationship. it means. Wait, so you're it, cheating. No, it's ethical because they it, they don't lie. It's no ho- one's oh, lying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're fucking other people. Yes. Okay. Yes, you're in an open relate. She's definitely always been old school about this. Yeah, yeah, we know. Natasha, I knew you were going to have a problem with this, but I feel like I might turn you today just in Try in your and thought, turn me, baby. By all means, <laughs> by Try all means. Try and turn me all right around. Wait, Rachel, is ethical, is ENM different than polyamory? Yes, because polyamory denotes a relationship, like a third or fourth or fifth that you're all in a relationship. Oh, so ethical ah. non-monogamy, you're allowed to just hook up with people. Well, it kind of probably, I mean, I don't know how it is for everybody, but I've been learning about how like you'll have a primary partner okay, and then they the kind of part. get Got off it. on either watching or cuckolding or hot wifing if it's together. Hot, or hot, hot wifing? Yeah, what's hot wifing? Take a look at to my right. <laughs> <laughs> so being a hot wife is like your husband wants, wants to it basically watch you get fucked by what they call a bull which is a hot, single, younger guy with Wait, a big dick. How's that different than cuckolding? That's the same thing, isn't it? No, cuckolding is, has a sort of a... a Secrecy? Um, like a degrading aspect to it. Oh. Hot wifing is the man is like almost controlling the scene. Oh, interesting. And like, I, I haven't obviously done it, but I watched a porno about it and it was actually super sexy because the husband and wife, it was all about them. They were super connected, I staring see. into each other's eyes. He was like inches away from her and she's just having so, like, so having the best. The, the and different- she's, someone else is fucking her? Yeah, literally. So the, the difference between- I've my car. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between <laughs> cuckolding and hot wifing is that your wife and her new lover aren't looking over at you and calling you like a little dick piece of shit while it happens. Yeah, and you're not got just it. in the corner like a redheaded stepchild. I like got it. You're, you're going like, like oh, yeah, no. give it but to what her. what is the man doing? Like, He's so going like, yeah, Is my husband I'll, jerking I'll, off? If he well, wants, he does what he wants. <laughs> so no, no. In fact, I don't know if this is how it always is, but in this video I watched, the man was fully dressed, the husband. Mm. He was looking real dapper. And she was gorgeous. And she was like, she like he was saying okay now take her bra off the man the mm. the bull was hardly even a person he was just kind of like a automatron that was being directed on okay. how to hey, do this a pro- it's a almost pro- like so you're pleasure. like being like I my penis or he's like- a proxy yeah. yeah interesting fascinating okay so this okay so let me just um finish my little sentence here yeah please, um, please. ethical that's ethical non-monogamy it could be other i mean it could be other things like they just date separately or like i just went on a date with a woman whose partner is a, ma- a queer man and they're in a um, man-woman primary partnership and deeply in love. They've been together 10 years, and, but they each da- she dates women and he dates men. And that's so the rule. Oh, I, didn't the, I bet he does the dishes too. <laughs> that's that's somehow homophobic and I don't exactly know how to explain it, but I feel like it is, Natasha. So so they can only... I want my primary relationship to be with a gay guy. The uh, guy I gotta live with at the house. No, that seems like a way better... No, and he like, go shopping gay. with you. And, yeah. uh, but he's not gay. He <laughs> like, he, they no, have a romantic relationship, man, woman. but they can open it up only for same-sex uh, tr- yeah. trysts. Yeah, that's do like they fuck? one particular situation. I think there's all different kinds. Yeah, fascinating. But do okay. your friends fuck? 
do my friend the primary one, man the, she's asking if the primary the one you just want to date with queer does man she have sexual intercourse with her male partner with her queer male partner oh all the time she pegs yeah. him they have a very intense sexual yeah, life i think cool. he's there because he's queer they love each other and she's also queer they love each other they have this very connected deep loving relationship and they're just ex- this this is the whole point of what i'm asking you guys yeah. okay. this is about exploring the full expression of human sexuality and what I'm capable and love and intimacy and connection. And trust me, I'm a Scorpio. I was a jealous fucking bitch for most of my life. I'm super monogamous. I've never cheated on anybody, but just to, let me just finish the last sentence. Go of for this, it. You're um, a Scorpio co- Kofi rising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fully. Um, okay. My marriage was largely sexist. Other than a uh, sexual revolution. I'm so interested in exploring the lifestyle, but I'm exhausted from having a toddler and going through a divorce. Yeah. Help me figure out how to balance finding my sexuality again and being present for this perfect little boy that I wanted more than anything. Mm. Signed, Aww. 42 and horny. Got it. 42 and horny. I got it. I, I have a question. That, and it under, obviously, you're, you're um, an awesome person and will tell me if you don't feel like answering it. But when you said <laughs> largely sexless, is there a reason for that? Like Because you mentioned also being sort of jealous. Was there cheating and you know, I'm I'm curious if what happened there has led to this, or if it was just the sexlessness. So um, I have always been a very sexual person. I'm a Scorpio. I'm a squirter. Like I love. I, I have just always been Scorpio really and a squirter. Sex- yeah, S- classic yeah. SS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, classic combo. And I grew up in Seattle. Oh, third S. Wait, hold and, on a second. Um, are you implying that squirters are more sexual than non-squirters? No, I just mean that there you have to be able to access uh, a certain. Um, comfort level in like just owning what you want and your pleasure. Are you, you saying s- squirting's a choice? Yes. So it's I not physiological. I'm a, I'm a G-spot evangelist and Natasha, I'm here to help you. It's what do you mean happen. help her? You don't know what she does. We've never discussed Yes, I do. I've le- of course you have. Wait, did you say you no, don't squirt? Her, wait, wait, why are you letting her not help me? <laughs> I want some help. <laughs> What's your exactly. advice? Well, so I mean, it, it, we'll we'll get we'll get into that because it's actually part of the story. But um, well, there's another to get story to answer Beth's question. Okay, you no, know, it's all connected. Okay, but it is complicated, and that's why I called y'all because I feel like you guys talk about a lot of things that I'm exploring, and also have insightful but humorous, you know. And you're like Natasha, you did IVF and had a baby in your 40s, and I'm in the same boat, and I just feel, uh, you know, you know what the boat is flo- is floating on, right? It's a lake of squirt. I'll tell you one thing, Rachel. I am definitely not focusing on on my, you know, exploring my sexual life. Like that's like not. It's hard to make that like a priority. A priority, I guess. Especially if it works as is. But or there whatever. is a di- there is things. a difference between you and Rachel. Uh, well, which, but which that's is- what I'm saying is Natasha. You are in your sexual prime, whether mm. you know it or not. You've been. We've all been trampled by COVID and new motherhood and you're in a long-term relationship which you guys have a healthy sex life i'm, I'm sure most of the way Moshe tells it and um <laughs> <laughs> we just need to bring a little more enm and, and wife that's kind, you know wife that's kind of why i'm here honestly <laughs> this is a bit of an intervention yeah she's gonna hot wife natasha wait uh, hot wife. Y- yeah she's gonna you're the bull me and bowl. Natasha are going to spoon while Moshe brings us ice cream. Yeah, we're going to do hot. <laughs> no, we're going to do warm wife, which is where uh, I, I have someone come in and just cuddle with my wife while I'm like, fuck I yeah, spooner. <laughs> that is a thing that people want. You know, any like, a scene, what they call it, like in a pre negotiated, you know, fantasy being acted out, whether it's, uh, you know, ropes or, or pa- paddles or, or cuddling, it's pre negotiated and then it's done. And then afterwards, this is aftercare thing which is the most tender intimate it's just an act of love it's an act of empowerment to ask for what you want and and be honored in that but to answer your question beth my marriage was uh largely sexless because um so i was a hairdresser most of my life i went back to school in my 30s and i had done all this therapy and all this work but my taste in men was really not catching up and so my therapist and i decided like when I oh I ended up getting this scholarship to Smith, where they have several old ladies going returning to their education. So I was like, I'm moving to Massachusetts, and I'm going to take a year of celibacy. And I did this very intentional year of no men, no dating, no sex, and active therapy to just try to like be enough for myself, which is of course the universal battle for women. Um, and then at the eleventh, so I was doing a, a African American studies degree. And for part of that, I did a summer um, in Ghana working on uh, anti-child labor 
and trafficking thing. And my husband was our driver. And so for three months, <clears throat> Uh, I get really motion sick. So I was always in the front seat and we just like chatted and flirted and ended up started dating. Um, and then I don't know if you know, but people in shithole countries at the time are not allowed to just travel to the U S. And so the only way that we had a chance to be together was for me to do this, uh, 90 day Beyonce visa. You sure heard the show. <laughs> we were, I we love were the definitely show. on that train. You were, did you get on the show? Someone actually nominated us and they called and interviewed us, but we were too normal and in love and like, like didn't have any secrets and like skeletons in our closet and stuff. You don't have to like, tell us why you didn't get on. All right. I have some thoughts. I got some thoughts to answer your question here. I think, unless you guys want to go first, go ahead. Mosh. Well, it just seems to me that like you were saying you're in the same boat, but the truth is you're in different boats because the difference between you and, and Rachel is that she's single. And so like exploring yeah. in this way is, is like uh, uh, in a way a necessity. And so a lot of times people have called us and said, like, I don't know how to deal with sex with a child. And this will be couples So go. How do we deal with uh, our sexuality? And we have said it's not the most romantic thing in the world. But one thing you could do is schedule. You know, you can make a schedule and say Thursday nights we get a babysitter and that's our night to like spend time together, watch a go to out on a date and have sex. And that's, that's the sex fun. night. And so you could set that schedule for yourself. You can say like, you know, Thursdays is hot slut night, whatever the uh, day night, uh, the day name for um, slut for slutting out. That's your night. You know, <laughs> on Thursdays, you get a babysitter. The babysitter comes over and you go to a, get tied to like a leather, you know, cattle prod man or whatever. Get your. Wait, I think I know the word for 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 slut night something bars uh etre anadro you got to get that yourself means, an etre anadro night and just schedule the etre anadro i think night. one slut night a week is probably good yeah. for a new mom and also yeah. uh i just want to say one thing too it's gonna get old why i'm just saying like right you're, now you're so like into this but you're like so old-fashioned you don't think like every night having to or, like Every week having to go to a sex club. I mean, that just seems like while you're like lactating, it just sounds like a lot. No, no, no. I'm definitely, this is what I want to clarify. It's not sex club. I'm not like putting on, you know, a like game outfit, leather <laughs> and going into like a, and getting, having orgies. Got it. You like, you like to play. And, that, I, and that's yeah. something that Beth, go ahead. No, I just like, look, I'm always going to be, I, I love that you've been doing your research. I still have more research to do because I recognize that I'm closed minded in some ways because all I hear, like, I, I don't want to say judging because I'm like, great, good for you. I'm glad that works. It's this, sorry, I'm going to go on a tangent. It's almost like how I feel about makeup when a girl's like, it's for me. And I'm kind of like, oh, but it's not uh -huh. <laughs> because if it didn't exist, you wouldn't have been taught that you're more attractive with makeup and what makes you, you worth something when somebody's attracted to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm only going off on that little tangent to say sometimes when it's like, I'm open, I'm all into this for who I'm what just sort of like, I, I'm, I'm sex saying is fun. It is, but I'm talking it's, about the violence, the masochism. But to that's me, it's, with different strokes for different folks. Agreed. This is why I prefaced it by what I'm about. What I just said. We're gonna get into I a classic need... Stellan Casher fight at the end it's of the true, podcast. It's true. We are. It always happens because I'm going. Oh, you are beholden to the patriarchy, and that means d dominance through violence. What if it's a woman spanking her? Say, w women inflict patriarchy all the time. This is simple. You just need to find a night, kink night, and you drop your kid off with your with your ex, and you say, "Here you go, here's dad," and then you go do whatever the fuck. But you she's want. also like, "How can I get kink feel kinky when I'm like having to do the dishes every day and having?" I mean, that's it why sucks. you take it's a day like, off once a week. It's your day. It's pamper day. It's peg peg day. But I do think that you have a responsibility now to your kid and there's like a lot of maybe even yeah. just like making a pie chart. Like I think that, you know, I would say your sex life and you going out and your single life should be like 20%. Yeah, that sounds good. You know, well, I have Wednesdays, Wednesday nights off. So Wednesday is Etrea Nadro. Okay. But um, what I want, what I was thinking too, and this is the other thing, a lot of my girlfriends are like, great, you, you know, because I also need a second stream of income. My husband's uh, not helping at all. All right. Your day name should be uh, TMI. <laughs> 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 okay I, TMI, by the way our daughter is waiting for us upstairs oh, so we have like two wait, more minutes wait i'm about to give her an acronym i we, we learned about edm from you or <laughs> <laughs> wait she didn't know what tmi meant yeah. no i think it's, she oh, misheard yeah too much information yeah too, okay, too much information no i mean i love it's it it's fucking I, complicated no i know no, it is complicated and rachel good luck on your journey we love you rachel thank you, you for being awesome. a thank fan you. enjoy it i, I hope really you score for from now on Farewell. Squirters Forever. unite. I'm never turning back. I love it. Bye, honey. Bye. Bye. 
Adios. Well, I think we really helped her. Oh yeah, she well she want one thing I can say for sure about her is that she wanted some help. She wanted advice. <laughs> She didn't want to. It wasn't about just saying a bunch of stuff. It was about asking for advice and, and receiving I it. I feel tired. <laughs> if you have a secret, give us a call at 213-222-8608. More importantly, get onto Netflix tonight. Oh, yes, of course. Today. Watch that. If if you didn't want me then, Moshe. Netflix. Beth is one of the best comedians. We love her. I'm obviously, love one of our best buds she here on the so podcast. She is so funny. But such a great stand-up. Uh, and, and now you all get to watch it. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Follow us on uh, Instagram, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And then you can subscribe to the Patreon. Pre-order my book. Do it all. We love yes. you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.